Every single two rand contribution collected by KFC at Hope during December will be donated to Gift of the Givers. For more on this, we are joined by the founder of Gift of the Givers, that's uh, Dr. Imtia Suleiman. Dr. Suleiman, a pleasure to have you on the program this afternoon. Uh, can you elaborate on the impact of KFC at Hope's donation uh, to the Gift of the Givers, particularly in terms of addressing critical issues or challenges that your organization faces? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Non it's, it's, sorry, Mr. Chancellor. It's, you know, it's incredible. You cannot measure the impact that it has made, the amount of feeding centers it's supported. What we've noticed, let's go back a little to understand the concept. Yeah. In, during COVID itself, we saw increased levels of hunger. You know, and then, of course, there was food parcel distributions, there were feeding centers, people had lost their jobs, two, over two billion people had lost their jobs, car guards were not working, there was no waiters, everything had come to a standstill, the vendors on the road, nobody to buy. But what we noticed after that, when COVID was over, that people started getting back to work. We first started picking that up in disasters. There's only that, it's always a fire or a flood. And normally when we go there, people will tell us, where's the building material? We have to start building. And the last two years, people don't ask for building material. They said, where's the food? And when that started happening, we got stunned. When people started asking, where's the food? Don't, they normally always ask for the building material. And then they said, if they're asking for food, the hunger is there even before the fire or the flood. And if they're hungry where the fire and the flood is, what about the neighbor next door? And we found that the neighbor next door, who may not have the fire or the flood, is also hungry. We started increasing feeding from three to five to ten days to flood-affected and fire-affected and non-flood and non-fire-affected people. And as we spread out, when we got to the Eastern Cape, if you know, because we've been there for quite a few years now, in February, we started seeing intense hunger and more and more kids with malnutrition were coming to the clinics. And quite a few were dying per day. And we asked the parents, like, why do you come so late? You know, you know and then the kids are hungry. They look at us and tell us, hunger is quite normal in this in Cape. Right. We're quite youthful not having food for four to five days. The difference is, you survive, your child doesn't survive. We got involved in the health department of the health and started intervening. And then we had a sad case on 6th of August, where a mother killed her three children and hung herself because of, of, of hunger. And from that, the incidents and what we had in the past, KFC couldn't have come at a better time because the amount of feeding centers that we started supporting, and as you watch them, normally it's 5, then 10, then 50, then 100, then 200, then 300 people coming. Once a week, twice a week, five times a week, seven times a week. The numbers of people start increasing, first for children, then adults, and more frequently in the week. And you can see the hunger. And then, of course, when that we found the person who passed on for the three kids, we start going to the villages. And you see the absolute hunger inside those homes, those child-headed households, where kids have not eaten any food for days, and there's no parents in the house. And we realize that this program has to get bigger, and all thanks to KFC and all the clients that go and buy the chicken, you know, that support us with that two rand. It may only be a two rand. Mm. It's a small amount of two rand. It added up to 15 million rand last year. Dr. Sungman, you've been on this platform and many others uh, speaking about the good work that your organization does. So in this collaboration with uh, KFC at Hope, what specific projects or even initiatives has the Gift of the Givers been undertaking? Well, well what I've mentioned, there's different categories. Mm -hmm. The one is the feeding centers, which will become much more important now when schools close. When schools close, remember, there is no feeding center at school. Right. So in, in advance of that, we've already made arrangements with a lot of people who normally do feeding centers not far from the schools to increase the amount. So in December, obviously, and into January, when the schools are closed, we need to increase the support for those feeding centers. Of course, for KFC support and the public support, we're going to do that. The second category is where I explained about floods and fire, where we find this intense hunger, whether it's Western Cape, whether it's Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, anywhere in the country. We find what the disasters, we, we, we discover hunger. The third category is school students, university students. They tell you we have tuition fees, we have the books, we have accommodation, we have transport, we have everything paid for, but they collapse in the classrooms. They can't concentrate on their studies because they are hungry. So KFC has agreed to that also, where we've been rolling out food parcels to university students. So the emphasis is on children at school, children to come to the community feeding centers, or the floods and fire and any other type of disaster, 
and of course university students. Those are the areas where the impact is the greatest and you can see the difference instantly. So of course we do know that this is a donation and people don't necessarily have to pop out that two rand when buying a meal uh, for instance at uh, KFC. But if there's a word that you could give to really urge or encourage people to do their part, what would that be? People tell you giving food parcels is a handout. Yes, absolutely, 100% they're right. But it's a handout that saves lives. It gives dignity to the people. It gives them hope. It, it, it satisfies a, a child that's starving, that's battling, that can't walk, that can't move. It, it brings calmness to a mother who can't feed a baby. An old man who can't take his medication, that's another category. Old people, you know, or any type of people dependent on TB and HIV med medication. So many cases, clinics call us and the sisters are crying. Our patients are not taking the medication because they don't have food. And the final way to, to answer your question is, put yourself in the other person's shoes. The fact that we're not on the other side, the fact that we have food in our house, that should be a form of gratitude and a means of saying, thank God Almighty, you've given me, it's my time to give back because I could have been on the other side. As we conclude today's uh, discussion with the Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman from the Gift of the Givers, of course speaking about uh, that or giving us valuable insights into the impactful collaboration with the KFC.